I have learned something very cool. I'm gonna need this, <laughs> the faucet, which looks tiny in my hand, some glass and a fresh bucket of water. Now, if I place the faucet down on a water block like this, this faucet will infinitely generate water. <laughs> Look at that. It never runs out. Now that may not seem incredible seeing how water does de regenerate in Minecraft, but not only does this mean that I can have endless showers, hello there, but I can also use this technique to permanently fuel my power generator, which means no more jar, no more manual refilling of water into this system. The only question is how I'm gonna do this in a neat way. Actually, I could probably move all of this to the basement. Ah! Oh, I forgot that there was lava there. Oops. Did I burn the thing? No, nope, we're good. Thermal generator with the faucet on top. And then I believe I can also use a waterlogged block. So that with water inside and, and that there. Yes, that's looking good. And then turn this on. It's not working. It's not working. Why is it not working? Why is it not filling it with water? Oh, maybe I need to turn the stair around. That doesn't work either. Maybe it's because this thing is not actually running at the moment. Well, it's draining water, but it's not refilling. That could be because this fills a bucket at a time and it doesn't actually fit a full bucket in there at the moment. So I guess I'm just going to leave it and check back on that later. Hello! Episode 27 in a brand new environment. First off today, I want to send a massive Omega thank you to all of you for following and watching my Vault Hunter single player series. It means a lot to me. And secondly, as you may have noticed, there's a little bit of slow pacing in uploading these episodes and my Hermitcraft episodes at the moment. And that is because I've decided to take vacation. I, like many others I'm sure, have barely seen my family in the past three years, so I'm making the most of this summer. But today, today I had some time over and I feel like vaulting. Hmm, this is in fact not working. Oh, that's annoying. Maybe I'll just try it without the stair. Does that work? No. Hmm. Well, maybe I haven't learned anything after all. Well, I guess I'll have to continue to manually refill, refill the water for now. Now, I've been thinking a lot about what mod I want to unlock next. And, arguably so, I would say that the most powerful mod in Vault Hunters for vault running is Botania. It's a magical technical flower mod, and it has an incredible amount of power-up utilities and tools that's going to be very handy inside the vault. The only problem is that it costs 12 research points. And currently, I have... just a moment... enough star shards to make three. <laughs> three knowledge points. <laughs> but I still think that that should be my goal. So, I need to farm vaults. Now, in order to farm the vaults, I need crystals. So, it's time to do some crafting. And I guess I actually move my altar to my warehouse since I have all my stuff in the warehouse. This whole in-between houses is really getting to me. This is, it's getting quite tight here in the reception. Anyway, first recipe of today. That is clay in there. Oof, that's a bad placement. Actually, let's let's move this thing. It can sit out here like a fine piece of art. This should be fairly straightforward, though. I'm worried about the clay, and rightfully so. I am I'm not a man of clay. 167 remaining. The others I think I have. Charcoal check, seeds check and saddle check now out of curiosity clay can be made through the chemical injection chamber taking dirt and injecting it with steam but that is mechanism and that's a mod that i don't have unlocked it can also be generated by the sludge refiner from in industrial foregoing another mod that i don't have clay balls however could be produced through gravel in a crushing wheel from create which i do have oh Oh, I can also wash sand. Hmm, I feel like I want to try this out just for, just for the heck of it. Propeller and encased fan. And I'm going to have to try the experiment in the fort because this is where I have rotational fort. 
You. You ruined my fort. Stupid. That's what I was gonna say. This is where I have my source of rotational force. Wait, let's see if I can do something fancy here. Like that. Yes, that creates water particles. Can I just, just throw in a sand piece here? Or do I need the fan to go the other way? Come on, make it clay! Oh, it did! It made it clay! Oh, that's awesome! Okay, so if I throw in a stack of sand, is it gonna turn the entire stack into clay balls? I assume it's gonna take longer. It's definitely taking longer. Yes, yes, yes. And... Oh, okay, so... <laughs> that was 64 sand generated 20 clay balls. Which, I guess, makes sense if it's a 25% chance that it's gonna turn into clay. Very cool! However, since I don't have sand production, I don't think that's gonna be omega useful right now. Instead, I'm gonna turn to an old friend. Mr. Pickerang. And this area looks rather promising to the north. Yes! Come to think about it, clay blocks is probably the best possible reward I can get in an Omega statue right now. Anyway, I have enough. One, two, three, done. That's crystal number one. Please don't give me clay again. <laughs> Ugh, diorite. Mm, actually looking pretty good. I do love, I do love my warehouse. I love to have a system like this because it makes everything so much easier. Remember, this is the ultimate way of destroying diorite because it is gone forever into the into the vault crystal. Yes, done. That was fast. Crystal number three. Ooh, that's packed ice. Hmm, I have one packed ice. The rest of the things, however, should be pretty straightforward. Liliacs, five cakes, and some diamonds. Time to repair my magnet. And get that ice. Which luckily shouldn't be too hard, actually. Aha! Time to destroy some terrain. <laughs> what did my... Oof. Gotta be careful with this picker egg, though. Done. These be nice. Oh! Really? After I've just spent most of my diorite. Ugh. Also, that is more kelp than I have. I do have one of these triple compressed diorite, but yeah, this is not going to be anywhere near enough diorite. Oh, this recipe sucked. 3059 still to go. I can't believe I'm looking at this, but recipes for diorite includes normal recipes as well as pressing lime sand with flint. <laughs> Well, I guess I'll go mining for a while. If my estimations are correct, I have around 2,500. Let's see. Throw all of this out. And... Oh! I did have enough! With 381 to spare. Whew! That was, that was a task and a half. But I do feel like I've done this world a gigantic favor in cleaning out the diorite. And I found three vault rock ores before I started to mine higher up so I didn't dig into lava all the time. That is a completed crystal. How did you get to the island? Are you stalking me, sir? Ah! You're a man of globes. It all makes sense. Now that I have four crystals made up, I am eager to see if we can get anything good with my catalysts. Which I also have to move to, to my new uh, in-between house house. It's getting awfully cramped in here. But it's highly temporarily. All of the static ones in this one and all of the random ones in this one. And let's have a look. First crystal. I'm looking for looting things like Gilded and Lucky is pretty good, although Poisoners and Hunger kind of sucks. Safe Zone? Safe Zone is really good. Oh, Rich! 
Rich is very good, and Rotten doesn't matter because all Rotten does is remove the ability to use time extensions, which I don't have yet. That may be a combination that I'm interested in. What about the next one? Nothing super awesome, and... Gilded, but unlucky. So I would get Gilded chests to spawn in the vault, but the loot inside would be less than normal. Hmm... I think I may actually combine these two. That's not great for what I'm currently looking for, but it's going to be great for gems. Rich, rotten, slowed. Yes. And then I got to check it again because now everything has changed and nothing that combines well. Plentiful or copious would have been the two that I'd be looking for. So this is a crystal that I'd probably... Oh, oh no. Just a moment. I'm so sad that I couldn't get this to work properly. Here we go. Produce, produce power, give me my system back. As I was gonna say, uh, I'll probably shelf this crystal for now. And I do have a few callus fragments, so I may actually want to craft up a few more. Beniotite and Alexandrite. Catalysts is one of my favorite things to work with in Vault Hunters. And that is a terribly bad catalyst. <laughs> Destructive. 200% durability damage. I'll reroll that one. That's a good one. That's, oh my goodness, also absolutely terrible. That's not great. And the last one, that's decent. So then we'll re-roll these two and... Uh, nah, I'll re-roll that again. Safe zone is great, but not for a double curse. Come on, get lucky. Uh, that's not great. Let's see if these two random ones gave me anything new. I'll put them at the bottom here. Mega Stronk and Extended. Extended <laughs> Mega Stronk on that crystal too. And plentiful, but again, no, not good enough. So what I think I'll do, in order to reroll this crystal and get more chances, I'm gonna add safe zone and difficult, because safe zone is great for looting regardless. It makes it so no chests are trapped. And if I can strike gold and hit something like horde or gilded or treasure, that would be great. I did hit gilded, but hunger and withering? Oh, is that really something I want? I could do lucky and trapped. Because trap doesn't matter since I have safe zone. Hmm. Yes, I'm gonna do that. Nice. And unfortunately nothing more that is good to add to the crystal right now. This is a bit of an addiction, but uh, I do still have some catalyst fragments, so I better use them up. That's garbage and garbage. Let's re-roll. And ooh, that's not bad. Let's see if it gives me something great. Oh, it gives me gilded! Yes! Clumsy, I believe, removes parry. Okay, so I can't parry any mobs, which is fine because I'm such low level that I don't have high parry chance anyway. This is actually a very good combination. Let's see if we get super lucky. Mm, nope. I don't feel like adding optimistic with challenging and hunger, even though five minutes extra in the vault is great. I think I think I'm pretty happy with this crystal. It's not a mega crystal, but it's it's definitely a pretty good one. Time to head to the fort and get ready. Because I still haven't moved my, my my vault chest nor my vault portal. I look so fancy. Actually, before I go in, now that I'm a soul hunter, I should check the soul... Oh, that's actually a pretty good thing. Star core. I think I'm pretty rich with vault diamonds, but it would save me a lot of Lermar. Although I only have 56 and I don't really want to focus on killing mobs in this vault. But with, with my talent Soul Hunter that I've taken two levels in, four levels in, I do have the plus 200%, which definitely helps out. It'll be interesting to see just how many I can get. Anyway, I think everything else is ready. It's been a while since I ran a vault, so this is scary. Here we go. Oh, and it's a scav hunt, huh? A lot of uh, a lot of mob kills. I don't think I'll be focusing on the objective. I'm just gonna be looting this vault as best I can and killing any husk that's in my way. Get out of here, husk! Get the chest and it's Omega. Wow, day is a good day. Oh, you know what? I forgot to make a rune dank, so I will get a lot of cluttered inventory because I still haven't done the level 50 adjustments. That's a bit annoying. And I believe I forgot my cobalt apples, which kind of sucks a little bit. I'm gonna need some water. Aha! Oh, that's a key piece! It's super important to also loot normal chests, because things like that can happen. Oh, that's incredible. Ouch. MLG! Yes, still got it. 
<laughs> this room is scary without fire protection. I think I'll just I think I'll just skip it. Speaking about rooms, I haven't really found any exciting room in this round so far. But I still got plenty of time. Ooh, maybe I can do a tennis altar. Hello, Mookie. Ooh, Kendall's loves me. And that's a pretty good chest, including a repair core. Oh, that's a village room. Finally something, <laughs> a good room. No. Ah, oh, dang it. And is that a Wild West room? It is. And this is safe zone, so I'm actually gonna dare to loot this. Even though creepers in here are very scary. That's another collection chest. I might just as well turn in the few things that I have managed to collect. Almost there on the bangles. But as I said, it is not a priority of mine in this vault. Looting is. Ooh, and a city room. Things are looking up. I mean down, because I'm going down, but yeah, you know what I mean. Imposter. Nay. Ouch. Okay, careful, careful, Escal. Oh, and this is the dragon room. Wow, okay, so all the good rooms. Also, the other side of the vault. This is great news. I do think I have time to loot a lot of this. Even though it is very scary because of this, there are a lot of chests hidden around this place. Ah, satisfying. Oh, look at that! I gotta get up there. This is the dream in a safe zone vault. Just a massive amount of chests. They don't even have to be gilded, because as I said, these chests can be extraordinarily good as well. That's so satisfying. Brilliant. Not again. Not again. Not again! Stop! You stupid, stupid thing. I'm out of here. Four and a half minutes remaining and I'm at the edge of the vault. So I'm gonna try and make my way back. Which I believe is somewhere along this side. Yeah, this was, this was one of the first rooms I went into, I think. Which means that home should be... Right over yonder. Yonder? Yes. Okay, I'm gonna spend... I'm gonna see if I can greet and spend another minute going just across to another room real quick. This is where... This is this is the things that kills me in a vault, but I'm gonna try... Oh, stupid... Why? Why? I'm stuck! Oof, that got really scary! Stupid baby zombies. I just wanna have a quick look. Any extra loot I can grab. I literally see zero chests. Okay, one more room, two and a half minutes. No, no, not worth it. That's a lava room. I'm not risking it for that. It's important to know your limits in Vault Hunters. And actually, did I complete anything? Bangles? No. <laughs> Nine out of ten. I, I mean, I wasn't really trying. I'll just kill some mobs around this start area and then call it a day. And maybe I'll actually bring home some honey as well. And some honeycomb blocks. All right, GG, I guess. Time to head home. I feel like that was a pretty decent run. I'm definitely excited to see the loot. I mean, any run where you get a key piece is obviously an excellent run, to be fair. I also got a mega statue pooping basalt, which could very well come in handy, and a Tabo pooping dirt. Sure, Tabo, go ahead. Is he dead? Repair core and key piece. Two very good finds. And that actually brings me up to three key pieces. Oh, and an H-bomb selling vault leggings. Hmm? My traders still live in the fort. And actually... Oh, that's rare plus trousers. Yeah, I'm gonna come have to I'm gonna have to come back and shop for those. All the vault gear I found was just scrappy plus. Doesn't mean that I can't get lucky though. Nope. Nope. Ooh! An epic idol. Oh, and a rejuvenate two sword. Actually, pretty good. This idol, though, is like one of the worst epic idols I've ever seen. Three levels and withering cloud. Yeah, that's not great. But but the sword, honestly, rejuvenating cl rejuvenating cloud is incredibly good. And it actually gives me a little bit of an idea. 
Hmm. Anyway, before I do anything else, I'm gonna have a good night's sleep and then have a look in my danks. 37 star essence. That's more than half a knowledge point, I think. And I did also move my docking station, so this should work just like it did in the fort. Yep, such a nice feature. Two Lairmar ore and one Painite ore. Stuff. More stuff. Burger parts. Quite a lot of them, actually. Ooh, 28 skill essence! Oh, that's that's great. That's fantastic. And, and a lot of uh, booster packs. Three relics. No, two relics and a mystery box. Ooh, already had that one, but this one is new and it's part of the warrior set. Last but not least, a handful amount of loose gems. I gotta say, though, I really like the docking station and the system to just auto suck in all the loot into my system. And I wonder how I'm doing on the burger front. Got 81 patties, 111 tomatoes, and 74 cheddars. So I could make 74 burgers. That's pretty, uh, that's pretty good actually. But as I said, my newly found rejuvenating sword has given me a very good idea. It does however require me to be able to create one more pog which I don't seem to be able to... I'm missing two gems? Gorgonite is one, and... Ah, Bombing Knight is another. Well, time to hit the fort, grab my fortune pickaxe, and five Bombing Knight ores should definitely yield me at least one, hopefully like 20. 10. I mean, that's not bad. Two per each is better than smelting. And then, how many did this? Is six Gorgonite. Come on, more than 12. 19! Wow! That's good. That's great. So that means that I can actually do something very exciting. Let's create a pog and then do that. Yes! Cryo chamber! Isn't this model awesome by the way? I really really like it. Next up I gotta grab my vault gold, my silver and a bit of bronze because I am shopping. Hello there friends. First things first, I'm definitely buying the rare plus leggings and I'm hoping to get lucky. My leggings are actually just common. They are really good though for common leggings, but here we go. Come on H-bomb, provide the rare and Ooh, they're not they're not great. They do have five armor but less armor toughness, less knockback, and only three levels. So they'll they'll have well they'll have one more thing than these. They're probably worth upgrading. And then I gotta buy anything else that I feel is worth it. Like for example, these burgers, maybe these boots from Paul, even though it's two gold. Yeah, yeah, I'll do it. Scrappy plus. I mean they could be Omega, or they could stay scrappy. And be absolutely useless. I'll buy this pixie apple from, from Danny Boy. A storage upgrade or two storage upgrades. I'll buy some black opals. Some Vutodai crystalline burger or uh, six. <laughs> Definitely want to buy Stress Monsters backpack. That's a fantastic buy. Look at my shopping spree. <laughs> Look at my poor vault gold supplies. <laughs> I had 20 vault gold. Ah, oh, I'm, I'm addicted to shopping, I guess. Anyway, now what I'm gonna do, because traders in Vault Hunters do not restock like villagers, because that would be Omega OP, just like villagers, I'm going to shift right click on the ones that I've purchased things from to extract them from the vending machine. And then I'm gonna insert them by right clicking into the cryo chamber. Bye Hellfire, bye, bye Danny boy. And they become cryo juice. So the more of these I put in, the more juice I get. And I actually have a lot of traders. Bye, Pete. And now this is almost completely filled up. Just a couple more and maybe one more. And yes, I have created life. Welcome to my fort. Uh, the... Uh, Skolda! Hello! Listen to that heartbeat. This is my first Eternal. A summon, or pet, let's not, let's not call them pet though, <laughs> that I can summon inside the vault to help me fight, as long as I've taken one level in Summon Eternal. Which I'm gonna do right now. 
Now there are a few different specializations, Ghoul, Overpower and Army. Army makes it so I get additional Eternals while summoning an Eternal. Overpower makes the Eternal I've summoned much stronger. And Ghoul make them debuff the enemies inside the vault. I'm gonna go for Overpower. Remember, these are free to reset as long as I find the correct flasks for them. Now the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna shift right click and rename my, my son to Captain Sparkles. <coughs> <laughs> Hello there, son. <laughs> you have a lot of facial hair, just just like just like your dad. Now the cool thing with Eternals is that I can right click and I get a full inventory. I can see the health that Captain Sparkle has. I can see their damage and their speed, and I can also see their levels. Zero out of one. The max level is currently one because I have one Eternal. If I can get another one of these, the max level will be two. And to level them up, I need these, the Crystalline Burgers, which luckily I bought a handful of, so here you go, son. Just just eat eat your burgers. There you go. Level, level one, big boy now. Now this gives me the ability to add either health, damage, or speed. And as you can see, it adds a random value between 1 to 4 damage, between 0.3 and 1.3 damage, and between 0.2 and 0.7% or it's basically 2% to 7% speed. Now having played Vault Hunters quite a lot, I know that speed is really important, so I'm actually gonna go speed. I think it's important to get this value here up to above 2.4 because then they become real speedy boys. So, here you go. I gave 0.4 or 4%, which I think was in the middle. Now, in addition to this, I also get to select an aura, and this is permanent for Captain Sparkles. And every time I create an Eternal, these three auras are random. You can get stuff like regeneration or luck. They are they are very rare, but they are also extremely powerful. However, my, my first son got resistance 4%, which gives me 4% resistance. Speed 1, which gives me plus 1 speed, which is really good. And Slowness 3, which gives Slowness 3 to enemies in the radius around Captain Sparkles. That's a tier 3 aura, and very strong. It's basically gonna slow down the mobs a lot. So, yes, I'm going to slow- I'm going for Slowness 3. There you go. Now, here's where my Sword of Rejuvenate Cloud 2 comes in. You see, I can gear my Eternals. And giving Captain Sparkles my rejuvenating sword means that he is going to fight with a rejuvenating sword and therefore create rejuvenating clouds that can heal me. Thank you, son. Gear inside an Eternal also never breaks, which is great. So you can actually, you can give them your old stuff when you're done with things and, and they will just use them forever. And this is also why I have got my backup chest of things. And I guess I could give him this scrappy chest plate. I can change these out later, so I can upgrade him just like I upgrade myself. I'll give him my old pants as well. They are really high armor. And all of these things matter, because just like a player, Eternals can also die inside the walls. Oh, I completely forgot about this chest plate. That's because I have my Omega one. Hmm. Maybe I should be a very good dad and give him... This chest plate. The, the required level does not matter for an Eternal. Unfortunately, I don't have any great helmets. I'll just, I I'll guess I'll just give him this for now. And just like for a player, enchants on the armor is also very important. So I'm going to go ahead and enchant these two pieces up. Although I don't need to put unbreaking on it because, as I said, the gear for an Eternal can't break. There we go. You can even go as far as transmorgifying their armor and making it they look extremely cool, which I may very well do further into this series, but for now, this is all I've got. They don't they don't render in the cryo chamber, but they will render once I summon Captain Sparkles, which I can only do inside a vault, but I I can imagine what Captain Sparkles is going to look like. And by the way, this this is a this is a borrowed chest plate, okay? Don't get too attached to it, son, because I may want it back and I haven't even upgraded it yet, but it's very good for you. Now since I had a lot more traders than I thought I did, I could probably make another Eternal, which means that I do have to invest in another Pog, but that's actually not that big of a deal. Yes. Aha! Time to make a sibling. Now I should say, the more Eternals I make, the more trader cores 
it's it's required for the juice to fill up. Getting closer. I do have a few more that are sold out, but I want to show you what happens if you take a trader that's not sold out that you simply don't want to buy. For example, I'm sorry, Mookie, but I'm not really interested in your diamonds. So then when I put Mookie in, he gives me a Pandora's box instead, which, you know, that could be really good or or not as good. <laughs> Let's do that again. I think this Alexandrite price is way too high for me, so I'd rather have a Pandora's box. Ooh, three Bootak shards, much better. Now I'm now I'm addicted to making Pandora's boxes. This one, CPK. Is that the final one? No, it's still not the final one. Gave me 14 golden apples. Another diamond trader. It's five ups and thank you for the Pandora's box. We've created life again. Here comes the sibling of my firstborn son, Captain Sparkles, and it is Wintergrave. Hello there, sir. Unlike Captain Sparkles, however, Wintergrave doesn't at all resemble his father, me. So um, I, I feel like I feel like we gotta bring my, my other son. <laughs> Hello there. In in what's in this Pandora's box though? Six netherite ingots. Oh, that's really good. <laughs> Now let's bring you home, place you next to your brother for now, and not as much health, not as much damage, but slightly more speed than his brother. And also, as you can see, these Eternals can now become level 2, since I have two cryo chambers, which means that I can feed you some more. There you go, Captain Sparkers, and I'm going to continue to take speed, because as I said, I want to get this value up to 2.4, ideally. I'll also give you some burgers. Yeah, I can see that you really want the burgers. Look at that mouth! It's like, give it the, the give the, me the burger. There you go. Now, Iskal definitely needs a little bit more health, so hoping for a high roll here. 15 to 19. Oh, that's pretty good. That's actually pretty good. I should say that if I equip them with gear that gives them hearts, for example, like these leggings... They do get extra health. I don't I don't know if that renders there. I don't think it does, but... Oh, no, it does. Yeah, so you see 21 instead of 19. Also, armor stat is down here together with resistance and parry. This is a very cool function that I'm very, very proud of in Vault Hunters. For my second point, though, I'm gonna throw it into speed. That was a mega low roll. Now, Iskal has slowness 1 aura, parry 4% aura, and wither 1, which applies... Wither one to enemies in the radius. And I think this is a bug. It shouldn't be three pluses here. It should be one if it's wither one. Hmm, I don't think either of these are very good, but I'm gonna go for four percent parry. Because that does give me four percent damage resistance or reduction. You're not as good as your big brother, is gal. And boom! Look at that. 18 armor. Captain Sparks is is rolling 21, which is that more than I have? No, I have 24. <laughs> Daddy's gonna have the best armor, okay? <laughs> now, just like a player, Eternals can also die inside a vault, but you can revive them. Life scroll using one of these, which they, they're actually quite cheap. For reference, I have 156 vault essence and paper. I mean, that's, that's just... I, I have two. I have two papers, but that's just sugarcane. So I'm not worried. But they are hopefully going to be super useful. And I absolutely love the dynamic duo. Now when I use Summon Eternal inside a vault, it's going to pick a random sun to join me in the fighting. But as I level the ability up, as you can see, the amount of Eternal summons increases. And at the max level, I can have five Eternals around me. I believe with army that's six or something, eight. Eight Eternals? I can't. I can't remember. I think that was changed in the latest version. So I'm still not. I'm still haven't updated my world. By the way, I'm. I'm I, I've been lazy with updating, but don't take my word for it. It says under the ability tree. The point is, I can have several Eternals following me at all times, and they can become very, very powerful with with super gear, etc. They can be. Oh, they they are they are Omega inside the vault, but. Unfortunately, I can't show you that today because I am out of time. So it's going to be a bit of a cliffhanger, classic, and I'll show you the Eternals in action in the next episode. For now, though, thank you so much for watching. I really do hope that you enjoyed the episode. If you did, please do hit the like button down below. And if you're brand new, consider subscribing, and I will see you in the next episode.